Hey, you, Final Fantasy XIV player, do you like gathering? Do you like the island sanctuary? Do you wish you had a house? Maybe you should come join us in Palia, a farming sim MMO with lots to do and see. Cozy, cooperative, and just pure wholesome. This is the place to be. It's a beautiful new world to explore, and you can do it together. All for the low, low price of free. I'm not even that far in yet, and I've already gotten deep into all the different facets of the game. There's so many things to do, expanding and upgrading your house on top of the 8 skills you can level. On top of that, it sure looks like there's room to add more skills. And there's already just so much there to play with, level, and so many achievements. If you played any farming game, or hell, even Animal Crossing, you might find your home here in Palia. Bring along a couple friends and you can go on expeditions together into the world. Help each other complete quests, or maybe fish together, which actually gives each other a stacking buff to fishing to make reeling in faster. Hunt wildlife in a group. Shoot at the same time to take down creatures in a single volley of arrows. Find hidden treasure chests scattered about the world and guide your friends to them. Find special flow trees that can only be yeah. chopped down with cooperation. Use the request feature to help each other out, or help other players at random. Design your houses, show off to each other. Follow the main story quest to discover what is going on in this world. That's right, there's an entire storyline to follow. And there's tons of world building going on from even idle conversations with NPCs. Aoni talks plenty about the capital and magic and the order. Things that, if are already in the game, I have not even come close to seeing them. Perhaps that's gonna be one of the updates, what with it being an MMO. Most games along this line tend to have some little bits of telling you about the town you are in, maybe an adventure to of the world, and not much else. Base game Stardew Valley, there wasn't really any of all that. The most we got is that Kent is back from the war. There's implied events beyond the bounds of your new home, but not much. Aoni alone probably talks about the wider world than all of that game. That isn't mocking Stardew, by the way. I love that game. But more a point of how obvious the game is being with wanting to build up a world beyond just, hey, you're in a little cozy town now. And that's really important in this game specifically because it's an MMO. Unless they want to have a, like, really short life cycle, they need to plan for content expansions. Even though what is there to start is a lot, and I mean a lot. Level cap seems to be 50 in every skill right now. And even getting towards level 5, you can noticeably see the EXP rates going down fast. Of course, I've not jumped into collecting new stuff yet that will likely be worth more EXP, but still, there's plenty here. The part I am probably most interested in is the farming system. In a lot of farming games, it boils down to figuring out what has the highest profit margin for the quickest grow time, and you just buy 200 of that seed and be done. Not here. There's a sort of a forced variety that I much prefer. Profit margins for seeds seem extremely small, like 10 gold on selling gardening products. That's because of seed bonuses. Each seed has a different secondary effect. Adjacent crops will get a specific bonus. Water retention, weeds gone, and the most important two, quality boost and yield boost. You can get more crops from a single seed and at a higher quality. So while that first potato might just be 10 gold profit, the second potato you got from the same seed is 100% extra profit. That is way cooler than a single crop. It encourages planning and variety. And variety will probably be wanted anyway because of food and recipes within the cooking skill. This food requires carrots. This one requires onions. And food is super important for leveling your skills. Eating food gives focus. Focus grants additional EXP and is spent with every EXP giving action. So bringing a bunch of food before going out into an expedition? That expedition will be far better. But of course, there's going to be plenty to criticize with the game too. No outright trading system, no proper furniture selling, bugs here and there, but what game doesn't? Especially one in beta. That's right, we're not even at the full release yet. This is the beta, but saves will no longer be wiped from now on. And the big thing? Monetization. I need to emphasize that this game is free, which means the developers are getting no money from you trying it out or anything. That means they need to have some form of monetization to keep going. 
there needs to be a cash shop. Given I'm a Final Fantasy channel first, I know most of you are probably burned in this or that way due to the cash shop in 14. Buying the game, buying a subscription, retainers for space, cash only mounts and emotes and such. This game only has outfits locked behind cash shop at the moment. I don't know what their plans are for the future, but if it's purely cosmetics and all, I cannot really call them out on this. There's a lot of clothing options for free. The premium shop has very intricate pieces and some that also glow. If I have any issues, it's how readily available the premium shop is from just my character window and how it's a quest built into the game. And even a store for it, justified in-universe as the Taylor NPC shop. But like, this must exist for the game to exist. I consider this you choosing to invest in a game and developers you like. You can think of Final Fantasy's cash shop like that too, but here, the difference is you are not spending anything at all without this investment. Going at the $10 rate for buying coins, yes it's a coin system instead of straight cash, it's 100 coins to a dollar, or the old adage about yen, even if that's not accurate. But yeah, it's this style of monetization. That's probably my most hated part of it. Whether you think $26 for the soothsayer clothing, $51 for all three in a bundle, is egregious, is up to you to decide. Let me just remind you again, the game itself is completely free. But the fact that it's actually not that much and the $50 coin pack will give you a few extra coins enough to cover that extra dollar makes it confusing and could lead to some shenanigans. I don't think there's any dark patterns involved, where the game makes it super easy to accidentally purchase stuff, but it still just makes things confusing. And of course there's always the fear that they start adding pay to win stuff, which, I mean, that would be super stupid, both conceptually and of the devs to do that. This is a cozy farming sim with a friendly focus. Why are you going to add pay to win elements? I can just buy the best pick in the game or such? There seems to be no point, but I've seen too much to not worry it is possible. My other worry is those content expansions. Do they have any long-term plans? Will they be able to keep things engaging in terms of MMO longevity? I really do hope so, because this is a really cool concept and I want to see it succeed and thrive. I want to see what fun ideas can be brought to the table. And you can help with that, because right now, you can play this game too. Not only is it the beta, but it's the open beta. So long as the game isn't down for maintenance, you can now play the game for yourself and decide if you enjoy it. Come along, bring some friends if you have any. If you're like me and don't, that's okay too. I'm having a whole ton of fun despite that. If you want to join in, check the description for a referral link. You'll get a free fruit basket for doing so. I believe the link works indefinitely, so use it if you want it. I only get rewards for the first five of you, so it's not like I'll be getting huge stuff out of it. Check the game out, and maybe I'll see you around in-game. And maybe you'll be playing on the Nintendo Switch when the game launches fully. In the meantime, I'll be building my way up and farming as much as I can. Please rate, comment, subscribe, follow my socials, and my Twitch. You may have noticed some of the footage was streaming footage. Take care, and may the power of unedited hogs lay waste, to your enemies. And even if this isn't my usual content, I gotta give the patron shoutouts. So thank you for supporting me, and I gotta give an extra special thanks to the big dragons who are... Altrios, Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Bergie, Ethan W, Frazier97, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Mizella, Shana, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Once again, thank you for watching. Come have a comfy time over in Palia. There's lots to have fun with.